But what I, what I want to share this morning is on the true nature of God. You know, if we don't really understand God, because, you know, a lot of people think God puts things on us. God, you know, the world system today says that, you know, if something falls out of the sky and kills 20 or 30 people, it's an act of God. And because that's an, the insurance wants to blame somebody else so they don't have to pay their insurance and things like that. And a lot of people, as we've grown up over the years, we sort of think, well, perhaps God does these sort of things. God you know, causes pain or God puts sickness on people and, and God so he can bless you after or something like that. God's not like that. We've got to understand the true nature of God. And when we understand the true nature of God, when the enemy comes in and tries to... you know, How many people know that the enemy goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour? He's the father of lies. He'll sow a lie to try to get us off course, thinking wrong. If you think wrong, well, you're messed up. And if, but if we can establish really in ourselves, that's not my God. That's not my God. My God would never do that to me. My God loves me so much. God, that is not my God. So if you can straight away cut that thing off at the, at the roots before it gets an opportunity to grow. And if some things have grown in your life, and if some things have developed in there where, where you blame God for your circumstance, I pray today that God will put in the zero, or what do you call it? The, the, the roundup, praise God. Thank you. You're very helpful today. <laughs> uh, and, and, and kill that thing at the roots up. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So, Father, we just lift our hearts to you today. We want, we want to raise, we want to pull out every weed. We want to pull out every lie that the enemy's sown into our lives. We want to just come to you today, my God, and we want to honor you. We want to stand before you today with arms open wide, with our hearts open wide to you, saying, Lord, above everything else, we love you with a passion. We love you with an everlasting love like you loved us. And, my God, we want to give you our best. We just want to give you our lives and we're asking you, my God, to erase anything that, that interferes with our relationship with you. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, amen and amen. I shared some scriptures or a little thought before the prayer meeting the other night. And I just want to just speak it again. Uh, I want you to understand that God delights in us. God delights in us and has always desired to be with us. God wants to be with man. If you remember in the beginning, God created a man so he could come and have fellowship with him. God, this is God's idea. God wants to be with us. We don't have to, to today while we're singing or whatever it is, pleading with God to come down. God wants to come down. What we've got to do is we've got to make an atmosphere for him to be able to come in. He wants to come into your life in fullness, in, in, in utter amazement. He wants to amaze you. He wants to, do, he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could even think about. He wants to love us so much. And if we can understand there that God really wants to be with us, he, for some reason, it's got to be God, amen? He desires to be with us. Uh, as we, and, and all we've got to do is just focus on his presence. We focus on his presence because we've discovered that he focuses on us. God sent his son to die for us because he loved us so much. In Ephesians 1, 4, it says that he chose us. You know, I don't know about you, but if, if I sit and think about me for long enough, I can give you a thousand reasons why God shouldn't love me. Is that true? If we think about that, that long enough, you will think about all the wrong and all the bad that you've done and everything like that. And by rights, God shouldn't really love me. But he does anyhow. We've got to understand that, that God loves me. And we've got to focus on that. We've got to know that, that, that God loves me with an everlasting love. The Father draws me to Jesus, it says in, in John 6, 44. The Father draws us to Jesus. In Jeremiah 31, verse 3, it says, The Lord says, I love you with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Uh, Zephaniah 3.17, it says, The Lord your God is in your midst. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. You know, you know today, 
I, I, I guess you've got to let your imagination go out a little bit. That can you imagine today that God is rejoicing over us with singing? That's it. I, I, I can't, my, my natural mind can't fathom that. But all I know is around the throne there, there is 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands singing with a loud voice. And I believe that God joins in with that great anthem, with that great choir as he sees his church down here on planet Earth. Though some might be struggling, though some might be going through some stuff, he's doing everything and, he's, and with loving kindness he's drawing. He's saying, come on, will you let me draw you into my presence? Will you let me draw you into that place where, where I can dissolve all your fears and all of your pain and all of your sickness and all of your hurts and all of your disappointments and everything? Would you let me draw you in? That's what God's doing. He's singing over us. He's rejoicing over us. So the true nature of God you know, sometimes it's very, very easy for us to distort, distort the nature of God uh, by comparing uh, our Heavenly Father through experiences we've had with our natural fathers, uh, with mothers perhaps, with a boss or a leader, uh, and we, when we see their shortcomings or their failures. Has anybody here ever been hurt by a leader or by a parent or somebody? Have you ever been hurt by somebody? Hmm? Hmm? Eh? Hurt himself, yeah. <laughs> Self-inflicted. But friend, we that's it's that's part of life. And sometimes these people that we've that we've respected and honored or something like that, and they've hurt us, and, and then we just think, well, that's perhaps the way God is, because we have trouble with our heavenly father. When this happens, we form an opinion. How, how many people know that opinions are can be pretty bad at times? I often say opinions are like armpits. We all have them, and a lot of them stink. See, these opinions can affect my relationship with God. You know, I don't, you can have mansion. You can have multi-millions of dollars, but really there's only one thing that really counts on this planet. It's my relationship with God. It's my relationship with Him. That's really all that's important because all these other things are going to fade away. All these other beautiful things are going to go. I bought a boat. <laughs> they said there's two good days in owning a boat, the day you buy it and the day you sell it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you've got no idea the, the dreams I had that I was going to go in that boat. You know, I haven't done any of them. All I do is scrape its bottom. I'll paint its bottom. And <laughs> really the truth of the matter is that we've got a loving God. We've got a wonderful God. We've got a caring God. A, 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 a heavenly Father that loves us so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die for us. That's how much God loves us. You know, one of man's... Mine, anyhow, greatest enemies, most surely yours too, is our soul, is our emotions, our flesh, our mind, our emotions, our soul part of us. That's the part that God's fighting for. Do you know that? That's the, God part, that's the part God's fighting for. The soul is the part of us that gets hurt when we go through life, when we go through things when we get hurt, when we get offended, when we get disappointed, grief, bitterness. These are all ailments of the soul. It's our soul reacting. The good news is that Jesus came to deliver us from our soul. He came to deliver us and set us free to be healed. We all need uh, from time to time to have our souls healed and our minds renewed. Can I say that again? We all, every one of us, I don't care who you are, we all need to have our souls healed and our minds renewed so we can be set free to be what God wants us to be. If we continue to live uh, out of our soul, if we continue to live out of there and not out of our spirit, life becomes very messy. Have you ever met people that, that just continually base themselves with hurts? and regurgitate all the things that have happened to them and all the things that 
and, and there's no joy, there's no victory. They're just full of hurts. And their life is a mess. Their marriage is a mess. Their families are a mess. Everything around them is a mess. And see, what we've got to do is we've got to understand, and that's why I believe we've got to have our minds renewed, that we start to say, God never did this to me. That's not God. And I'm going to rise up. I'm going to fight this thing. I'm going to push back what the enemy has done. And you know the Bible's got a verse for everything. What the enemy meant for harm in your life, God will turn around for good. Amen? Amen. Whatever the enemy meant harm, to destroy you, to pull you down, to, to, to whatever it might be in your life, God will turn around and bring it to good. Amen. That you in turn can say to somebody else and, 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 and give them a kick in the blessed assurance <laughs> and tell them that's not God. That's not my God anyhow. My God is the God of love. He's God of mercy. But if, you, if we live out of our soul all the time, life gets very, very messy. And we just continue to live in hurts. We continue to live in disappointments. When you, when you live like that, you make wrong decisions. I've made a lot of wrong decisions in my life because I was messed up. Anybody else like that? <laughs> we don't need the fans. There's everybody's waving. Amen. Is this, can you catch where I'm going here today? Come on, we've got to wake up. We've got to, we've got to realize that, that our God's not like that. God does not want to give you bad things. He wants to give you good things. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. It says in Romans 8.1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh or the soul, but according to the Spirit. It is impossible to live from the soul or the flesh and submit to God. It is impossible when you're messed up like that to really submit your life to God. What I find in churches all over the world is people messed up, come out on an altar, get prayed over, get spat on, get shaken, get pushed, get whatever it happens out here, uh, oiled, goodness knows what, and go back the same because until we change the way we think, nothing changes. Until we replace the thing that is hurting me and the thing that's bringing me into that place, there's no Band-Aid for it, friend. It's total deliverance. You can't put a Band-Aid on it. You can't put a little bit of oil on it. You can't put a, just a little... No, we've got to have our minds transformed. We've got to be totally changed. We've got to start to think differently. We've got to start to declare the goodness of our God. Can I say this to you? You cannot out brag God. You cannot say more about God and his goodness because that's how good he really is. You cannot exaggerate the goodness of God. People might think you're crazy when you're saying how great God is and particularly if you're going through some things. But I want to tell you, we've got to change the way we think. We've got to change the way we speak. We've got to put things back into our brain, into our thinking that will drop into our spirit, that will declare that our God reigns and that the devil is a liar and he's a thief and he's a cheat and he will not overcome, he will not triumph in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Yes. We've got to be able to do it. It's impossible to live from the soul. It says in verse, Romans 8, verse 7, it says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. You know, some of the things that I find with people, it's in soul ties. Soul ties can be very, very good and be very, very bad. You and I have to be very, very careful who we give ourselves to. You know, there, and years gone by, and, and I've been around for a, for a while now, but you know, it was people used to go around with saying, I want to speak into your life. Friend, be very, very careful who you allow to speak into your life. Don't allow somebody that's had 10 divorces to speak into your life about marriage. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, would you? Don't, don't allow somebody that's full of bitterness and anger and, and goodness knows what talk to you about the love of God. 
because they've never experienced it. Be very, very careful. Soul ties are very, very strong and very, very binding. Be very, very careful who you allow into your life, who you allow to speak into your life. I've got a good idea. Why don't you just read the Bible? <laughs> Imagine you just ask God. Oh, he's too busy. <laughs> you know, our soul can be very, very easily influenced. Some blame God when bad things happen to us. I used to be like that before I was saved, and I guess when I first got saved, why did you do that to me, God? I said, I never had anything to do with it. But I never heard that. Some blame God. James 1.13 says, says this, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. But he said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I'm talking about the true nature of God today. Not the one that we might have conjured up in our thinking. Not the one be, that we might have and uh, somebody might have told us what he's like. When I first, when I was a little youngster, I remember being at the back fence uh, talking with a couple of little Catholic boys at the back. And I might have said some wrong words. I might have said some wrong things or did something wrong. And this little Catholic boy said, you have just committed three, I forget what they were now, sins, but they were bad ones. But anyhow, what do they call them? Mortals. I'd commit, I did three of them and three, three strikes, you're out. <laughs> I didn't know we were playing softball, but three strikes, you're out. And I was out. He said, you've got no hope. You're finished. And I carried that for a long time. I thought, why bother? I'm finished. I've done, I did it back there when I was seven. <laughs> I wrecked it for myself. I've, I've got no hope. I did these three things and I'm out. Even when we went to church, I was the biggest hypocrite you could ever get. I only went to please Nancy. I didn't want to go to church. I used to sit on the fence outside the church and pull my tobacco out and roll a cigarette and blow smoke over everybody to let them know I wasn't one of them. <laughs> I prayed when I first went to church. I said, God, whatever you do, please don't make, make me like one of these people. <laughs> they didn't have any joy. They didn't have any victory. They were miserable. We can't exaggerate the love of God and the goodness of God. We've got to get out there and brag about our God, amen. You know what I, I, I find? That if we start doing that, you, you'll never, things will start to change around your life. You know, if, if the opposite works when we get all negative in that, well, what will happen when we get all positive? And we start talking about God in a wonderful way, saying how great God is and how wonderful God is and, and he will meet my every need and, and, and God loves me so much and, and perhaps it might change the whole atmosphere of your life. Do you know that God needs an atmosphere? He says, I will enter his, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I'll enter his courts with praise. We need an atmosphere to enter into the things of God. We need a, I'm not just talking about a positive mental attitude, but that's not a bad thing if it's done right. Amen. I know a lot of people are just positive all the time, but they don't connect it with God. I believe that our God is an amazing God. He's a fantastic God. God never breaks his word. He is bound to his word and to us through a covenant. He's bound to us through a covenant. God doesn't sin. God never sins, and he can't give you what he doesn't have. God can't give you sickness because he doesn't have it. God can give you love because God is love. God can give you mercy because God is merciful. God can give you all those good things because that's who God is. God is not sickness. God is not angry. God loves us, amen? God loves us. And, you know, even the joy that was set before Jesus hanging on that cross, he endured the cross for you and me. What an amazing thing that is. So he can't give you what he doesn't have. God does not inflict sickness or sin um, so as that later on there may be a good outcome or to bring you to him. But what God will do, he will use things to bring you to him. 
He doesn't put it on you. Usually we put it on ourselves. Like Angus. The Spirit told him not to do that. He did. Tell me that. He said, the Spirit told me not to do it, to get a, get a proper person, whatever it was, a, a builder, to put it up. I can do it. <laughs> Jeez. We'll pray for you later. <laughs> he doesn't put that on us so that we can have a good outcome later on. To be really, really honest with you today, if God's perfect will was done in this earth, this would be an amazing place. <laughs> Just listen to that. If God's perfect will really was done on this planet, what an amazing place it would be. But God says to pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no sorrow in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. There's no nothing. Amen. But if God could have his way, this place would be such a beautiful place to live in. Amen. What an amazing place. What an amazing thing it would be to live in this planet with God's perfect will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We live in an unperfect world. Anybody notice that? Do you know, in Victoria, it's a law that you can abort a baby one day before due date. You know how they abort them? I'm going to be a bit crude. They hose them out with, a, with water pressure. Full-term baby. One day to go. It's been documented last year, 52 babies were born that way alive. They put many of them in a solution, in a bucket of water, of this solution, and drowned them. Many of them they put them into a, just a, a room where they lay on a table to die. As far as I'm concerned, that's murder. We live, I guarantee that doctor was glad that his mother didn't decide to abort him. We're living in an imperfect world, friend. We're living where people, and I'm look, looking at those rallies that are going on down there it's supposed to be peaceful and goodness knows what. We, you'll never get Australia back that way. You know how we're going to get Australia back? It's when we, the church, rise up and proclaim the goodness of God. What Kendall was saying today, they got angry with Jesus, or they got angry with Lazarus. They got angry with Jesus because people were following Jesus because they saw the goodness of God that raised him from the dead. Amen. They saw something. Friend, the world doesn't want to just see buildings that are built on a corner somewhere. We, the church, have got to go out from these walls and become the church. We've got to go, we've, we've got to go out there and declare. To, 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 you know, people today, they'll get there and they'll tell you about the latest movie they saw. And they'll brag about the movie and goodness knows what. It's about time we started bragging about our Jesus. Amen? Brag about Jesus. 52 babies were born aborted alive, just left to die. What a horrible thing. What a horrible, horrible thing that is. But that's the world we're living in today. Horrible thing. Just place in room to die alone. God wants his will to be done on this planet. Amen. We're talking today about the nature of God. The real nature of God, the true nature of God. That God wants to bring his will on this planet through his church, through his people. I, I believe with every fiber of my being that Jesus came onto this planet with a purpose, obviously, to destroy the works of Satan. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of Satan. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And when Jesus came on this planet and started healing people, the Bible says that, that he was on his way on a journey, going somewhere, but the multitude came around. When he saw the multitude, he stopped and he healed them. He had compassion on them. 
Friend, today you, you may be sitting there with, with, with all the pain in the world in your life and feel like as if nobody understands you. But I want to tell you there's one that understands you more than I'll ever understand you, more than your husband or your wife perhaps will ever understand you, more than anybody else will ever understand you. His name is Jesus. And you see, Jesus is passing by. He's walking by, he's, he's walking by our lives, he's walking with us all the time. And all, all he's looking for is somebody like, like that young man that started to cry out, Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. And there's got to come a cry from our heart where we understand that Jesus is the answer. He is not walking around with a big lump of four by two wanting to belt you over the head for everything that you've done wrong. He wants to be able to bring you out of the, out of the hurt and out of the disappointment, out of the brokenness and the distraught that you realize that, hey, things, bad things have happened, but, but God loves me and I'm okay. I'm okay, amen, because God loves me. And God's going to turn something good out of this. I don't understand some things. The young lady that we prayed for last week had tumours through her brain and through, all through her body on her liver. And uh, we prayed for her, we anointed with oil. The first week she, they released her from hospital, she came to church. She, her vision was starting to come back. Last week I got a text to say that she's had another report that the, that the tumours on her, on her liver are now shrinking as well. You know, that God, we, come on, friend. Come on, friend. Come on. Come on. Come on, let, let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the honor. Let, let's fall in love with him over and over and over again. You know, one of the things when, when God speaks in Revelations, one of the main things is they left their first love. You know, it's easy to leave your first love. It's easy to walk away from things. It's easy to let your soul some, somehow or other control us. And, but friends, we've got to deal with our soul. We've got to say, soul, get down. You know, David spoke to himself. He said, why are you, hands, why are you hanging down? Lift up those hands. One of the other Psalms says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up your everlasting doors. And the King of glory will come in. Yeah. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. Friends, some pipsqueak thing doesn't want to come into your life. You know, the king of glory wants to come in there and he wants to fill you with his presence and with his power, with his anointing, with his love and with his mercy that we can go out there and love the unlovely. Amen. Oh, I pray that those, those doctors that are aborting those babies, the conviction of God will come upon them. And that's the only way you're going to save, that there'll be no doctors that'll do it. Amen. Yes. Yes. Jesus came to show the world what God was really like. They found a woman that had just been caught in adultery. Now all the, all the religious and all the self-righteous people were around. And they were saying, stone her. And they were trying to really put the pressure on Jesus. And one of the things that I really caught one day was, he said, you, he, he said, he has, who has no sin, cast the first stone. And you know what he did? He was the only person standing there that had no sin. And he said, I'm going to bring this back off you and I'm going to put it back on me because I'm the only one here with the right to stone this girl. None of you have. And he started writing in the sand. I don't know what he wrote. Nobody really does. But he started writing in the sand and the conviction of God came on each one and they left. And then he said to the woman who was caught in adultery, he said, where are your accusers? She said, they're gone. There's none. And he said, neither do I. There's some people in this room right now that need to hear that word. Neither do I accuse you. God is not accusing you. God is not holding it against you. He has come to release you. Amen. He has not come to condemn you. Hear the word of the Lord and be free in Jesus' name. But he did say this, go, sin no more.
Amen. I want you to stand today. And I, I want you to do something with me today. That just, Could you just stand this morning with your arms wide open to God, saying, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Would you come and pour in the oil and the wine, the kind that would just minister to me, Lord, today and wash away all the guilt and the shame and the pain, wash away the stain, that I can be totally 100% yours, Lord. Stand with arms wide open, heart surrender to you, Lord. He's wanting you to come. Come, Holy Spirit, into our lives today. Come, mighty Spirit of God. Come and heal us and deliver us and set us free. Come, mighty Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You might be in this house today and you really need the Spirit of God just to wash over you. We're just going to open this altar. We're going to anoint people with oil shortly for the which we do here for people that have sickness or need a whatever. But if God's speaking to you today and you just need to step out, you know, stepping out sometimes is stepping away from as well. And it's an act of your will that I'm just going to put my soul down and I'm just act of my will, I'm just going to step out and leave that junk behind me and walk towards, not kneel, please, not kneel but walk towards the one who gave his life for me, the one who loves me more than anything else. If that's you today, would you, would you be bold enough, strong enough to slip out of your seat and just let that happen for you today? Just come. Slip out of your seat and come.